You are very welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Act, act two. two. Oh, act two. Yes, act we two. are at act two. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <my friend. laughs> it's act two. Oh, you do. Okay, uh, team one. Come here. <laughs> Was there ever a man had such luck when I kissed a jack upon an upcast to be hit away? I had a hundred pound on it, and then a horse and jack and apes must take me up for swearing. <laughs> As if I borrowed my oaths of him and might not bend them at my pleasure. What got he by that? You have broke his pate with your bowl. If his wit had been like him that broke it, it would have run all out. When a gentleman is disposed to swear, it is not for any standers by to curtail his oaths, huh? Uh, no, my lord, nor crops the ears of them. Horse and dog, I gave him satisfaction. Would he had been one of my rank? To have smelt like a fool. I'm not vexed more at anything in the earth. A, a pox on it. I had rather not be so noble as I am. They dare not fight with me because of my, the queen, my mother. Every jack slave hath his belly full of fighting, and I must go up and down like a cock that nobody can match. You are cock and capon too, and you crow, cock, and with your comb on. Is this so? so? It is not fit, your lordship, should undertake every companion that you give offense to. No, I know that. But it is fit I should commit offense to my inferior. Aye, it is fit for your lordship only. Why, so I say. Did you hear of a stranger that come to court tonight? A stranger? And I not know on it? He's a strange fellow himself, and know it not. There's an Italian come, and tis thought, one of Leonardo's friends. Leonardo's a banished rascal, and he's another, whatsoever he be, who told you of this stranger. One of your lordship's pages. Is it fit I went to look upon him? Is there no derogation in it? You cannot derogate, my lord. <laughs> Not easily, I think. You are a fool granted. Therefore, your issues being foolish do not derogate. Come, I'll go see this Italian. What I have lost today at bowls, I'll win tonight of him. Come, go. I'll attend your lordship. That such a crafty devil as his is his mother should yield the world. This ass, a woman that bears all down with her brain, and this, her son, cannot take two from twenty for his heart and leave 18. Alas, poor princess, thou divine Imogen, what thou endurest betwixt a father by thy step-down governed, a mother hourly coining plots, a wooer more hateful than the foul expulsion is of thy dear husband, and than that horrid act of the divorce he'll make. The heavens hold firm the walls of thy dear honor. Keep unshaken the te thy te that temple, thy fair mind, that thou mayest stand to enjoy thy banished lord and his great land. 
Scene two, Imogen's bedchamber in Cymbeline's palace. And a Who's trunk there? in the corner. Who's there? My woman, Helen? Please you, madam. What hour is it? Almost midnight, madam. I have read three hours then. My eyes are weak. Pull down the leaf where I have left the bed. Take not away the taper, leave it burning. And if thou canst awake by four of the clock, I pretty call me, slept hath size my holy. To your protection, I commend me, gods, from fairies and the tempers of the night. Guard me, beseech me. Ye. The cricket sing, the man's o'er labored sense repairs itself by rest. Our Tarquin thus did softly press the rushes ere he wakened the chastity he wounded. Cytheria, how bravely thou becomest thy bed, O oh, fresh lily, and whiter than the sheets that I might touch, but kiss, one kiss, O oh, rubies unparagoned, and how dearly they do it. <laughs> Tis her breathing that perfumes the chamber thus. The flame of the taper bows towards her and would underpeep her lids to see the enclosed light now canopied with these windows, white and azure. Uh, laced with blue of heaven's own tinct. <laughs> but my mind, my design to note the chamber, I will write all down, and such and such pictures, uh, should there be a window and adornments of her bed, there are us, the figures, why such and such, and the contents of the story by which some notes of her body. Oh, above 10,000 meaner livables would testify. Oh, to enrich my inventory. Oh, sleep. Thou ape of death, thou die, and lie dull upon her, and be her sense, but as a monument. Huh. Thus in a chapel line, huh. come off, come off. Oh, as slippery as the Gordian knot was hard. Tis mine, tis mine, and this will witness outwardly as strongly as the conscience does within to the maddening of her lord. Oh, on her left breast, a mole sinkly spotted. <laughs> like the crimson drops in the bottom of a cowslip. Here's a voucher, stronger than ever law could make. This secret will force him to think I have picked, picked the lock and ting the treasure of her honor. <laughs> no more. To what end? To what end? Why should I write this down? That's riveted, screwed in my memory. She hath been reading late the tale of Tyrius, and there's a leaf turned down where Philomel gave out and gave up. <clears throat> I have enough that the trunks again back and shut the spring of it. Swift, 
Swift, you dragons of the night, that dawning may bear the raven's eye. I lodge in fear. Though this is a heavenly angel, hell. Boom, boom, boom. Three, three. Frozen. Frozen. I see frozen. Oh. Unfreeze. 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 It's not. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, <laughs> She hath not yet forgot him. Some more time must wear the print of her remembrance out, and then she's yours. Queenie, Miss Leila. Queen. You're, Leila. you're in mute, Leilani. I lost my place because I was letting Keith back in. Oh, well, it's uh, entrance. I don't have um, I don't have the line number. Do you have that line number? I don't have a line number. Scene three. Scene three. Yes. Yes. Oh, I have it. You are most bound to the king. That one. Yes. Oh, yes. 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 Thank you. You are most bound to the king who lets go by no voyage advantages that may prefer you to his daughter. Frame yourself to orderly solicits and be friended with aptness of the season. Make denials, increase your services. So seem as if you were inspired mm -hmm. to do those duties which you tender to her, that you in all obey her. Save when you command to your dismission tense and therein you are senseless. Senseless, not so. So, like you, sir, ambassador from Rome, the one is Caius Lucius. Lucius, oh yes, a worthy fellow. Um, albeit his, he comes an angry purpose now, but that's no fault of his. We must receive him according to the honor of his uh, sender and towards himself uh, his goodness forspent us uh, uh, on us we have exceed our we must extend our notice our dear one uh, and dear son when you have given good morning to your mistress and attend the queen and us, and we shall have a need to employ your towards this Roman. Come, our queen. If she be up, I'll speak with her. If not, let her lie still and dream. Why you leave, ho? I know her women are about her. What if I do line one of their hands? <laughs> His gold, which buys admittance, oft it off here yeah, and makes Diana's rangers false themselves, yield up their deer to the stand of the stealer, and tis gold, which makes the true man killed and saves the thief. Nay, sometimes hangs both thief and true man. No, what can it not do and undo? Oh, make one of her women lawyer to me, for I yet not understand the case myself. Boy, you leave. Who's there that knocks? Uh, a gentleman. No more? Yes, and a gentleman's woman's son. That's more than some whose tailors are as dear as yours can justly boast of. What's your lordship's pleasure? 
the lady's person. Is she ready? I to keep her chamber. Uh, gold for you. Tell me your good report. How, my good name? For to report of you that I shall think is good, the princess. Good morrow, fairest sister, your sweet hand. <laughs> Good morrow, sir. What lay out too much pains? For purchasing but trouble, he thanks I give is telling you that I am poor of thanks and scarce can spare them. Still, I swear, I love you. <laughs> if you but say so, do it deep with me. If you swear still, your recompense is still that I regard it not. This is no answer. But that should you say, but that you should not say I yell being silent. I will not speak. I pray you, spare me. Fate, I shall unfold equal discourtesy to your best kindness. One of your great knowing should learn being taught forbearance. To leave you in your madness to my sin, I will not. Fools are not mad folks. Do you call me fool? As I am mad, I do. If you be patient, I will no more be mad. That cures us both. I am much sorry, sir. You put me to forget a lady's manners by being so verbal and learn now for all that I, which know my heart, do here pronounce. By the very truth of it, I care not for you. And I am so near the lack of charity to accuse myself. I hate you, which I had rather you felt than make my boast. You sin against obedience, which you owe your father. For the contract you pretend that base wretch, one bread of alms and fostered with cold dishes, was scrapped to the court. It is no contract, none. And though it be allowed in meaner parties, yet who shall, who than he more mean to knit their souls on whom there is no more dependency but brats and beggary, <laughs> in self-figured not, yet you are curbed from that enlargement by the consequence of the crown, and must not soil the precious note of it with base slave. A hilding for a livery, a squire's cloth, a pantler not so eminent. Profane fellow, profane fellow, wert thou the son of Jupiter, and no more, but what art thou art besides? You were too base, to be his groom, to wear dignified enough, even to the point of envy. It were made comparative to your virtues, to be styled the underhangman of his kingdom and hated for being preferred so well. The self forgot him. He never can meet more mischains that come to be but name of thee. His meanest garment garment had ever that ever had but clipped his body is dearer in my respect than all the hairs above thee where they all are made such men. How now, Pisanio? His garment? Oh, now the devil. To Dorothy, my woman, hide thee presently. <coughs> His garment. I am a am a spirit with a fool, frightened <clears throat> and angered worse. Go bid my woman search for a jewel that too casually had left mine arm. It was my master's. Shrew me if I will lose it for a revenue of any kings in Europe. I think I do think I saw it this morning. Confident I am, last night was on my arm. I kissed it. I hope not be gone to tell my lord that I kissed out but he. Will not be lost. I hope so. Go on search. You have abused me. His meanest comment. 
Hi, I say so, sir. If you will make an action, call it witness to it. I will inform your father. Your mother, too. She's my good lady and will conceive, I hope, but the worst of me. So I leave you, sir, to the worst of this content. Oh, oh, be revenged. His meanest garment. <laughs> well. <laughs> Scene four, Rome, Hilario's house. Oh, fuck. <laughs> you oh. all right? Fear it not, sir. I would I were so sure to win the king as I am bold her honor will remain hers. What means you I make up to him? Not any but abide the change of time, quake in the present winter's state, and wish that warmer days would come and be these seared hopes. I barely gratify your love. They failing, I must die much your debtor. Well, your very goodness and your company or pays all I can do. By this, your king hath heard of the great Augustus Caius Lucius will do it his uh, commission uh, thoroughly. And I think that he'll grant the tribute, attend uh, to the uh, uh, ranges and look upon your uh, Romans uh, whose remembrance is yet fresh to in their grief. <laughs> I, I do believe status though I am none, nor like to be, this, that this will prove a war, and you shall hear the legions now, Gallia, sooner landed in our not fearing Britain, than have tidings of any penny tribute paid. Our countrymen are men more ordered than when Julius Caesar smiled at their lack of skill, but bound their courage, worthy his frowning at their discipline. Now mingled with their courage will make known to their approvers they are people such that mend upon the world. See, Iacomo. The swiftest heart have posted you by land and winds of all the comers kissed your sails to make your vessels nimble. Uh, you're welcome, sir. I hope the briefness of your answer made the speediness of your return. Your lady is one of the fairest that I have ever looked upon. And there with all the best. Or let her beauty look through a casement to allure false hearts and be false with them. Well, the tender good. I, <laughs> here oh. are letters for you. <laughs> Thank you. Their tenor good, I trust. Tis very like. Was Caius Lucius in the Britain court when you were there? He was expected there, but then uh, not approached. All is well yet. Sparkles the stone as it was wont? Or is it not too dull for your good wearing? And I lost it. I should have lost the worth of it in gold. I'll make a journey twice as far to enjoy a second night of such sweet shortness, which was mine in Britain. Well, the ring was won. Yeah, the stone's too hard to come by. Not a whit, your lady been too easy. Make not, <laughs> sir, your loss, your sport. I hope you know that we must not continue friends. Oh, good sir, we must. <laughs> if you keep a covenant, had I not brought the knowledge of your mistress's home, I grant uh, we were to question further, uh, but I now profess myself the winner of her 
honor. <laughs> Together with your ring, and not the wronger of her or you, having proceeded but by both your wills. If you can make apparent that you have tasted her in bed, my hand and ring is yours. Hey. If not, the foul opinion you had of her pure honor gains or loses your sword or mine or masterless leaves both to who shall find them. Sir, my circumstances being so near the truth that I will make them uh, must first induce you to believe whose strength I will confirm with oath, uh, which I doubt not, and you give me leave to spare when you shall find you need it not. Proceed. First, her bedroom, her bedchamber. Uh, yes, 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 <laughs> yes, yes. Where I confess I slept not. <laughs> oh. But the professor had that well worth watching. It was uh, hanged with a tapestry of silk and silver. The story about proud Cleopatra when ooh. she met her Roman and Sidness swelled above the banks or for the press of boats and pride. A piece of work so bravely done, so rich that it did strive in workmanship and <clears throat> not, which I wondered could be so rarely and exactly wrought, since the true life on it was. And this is true. Yes. And this you might have heard of her by me or by some other. Ah, uh, most particulars must justify my knowledge. So they must, or do your honor injury. <laughs> the chimney, the chimney is south the chamber, and the chimney's piece, uh, Chase Dion bathing. Never saw I figures so lively to report themselves. The cutter was of another nature and uh, dumb. Outwit her and motion and breath left out. This is a thing which you might from relation likewise reap being as it was much spoken of. Well, the roof of the chamber was golden cherubims in fretted her and irons, and I forgot them. <laughs> there were two winking cupids of silver, which no one foot standing, nicely depending on their brand. This is her honor. Let it be granted you have seen all this, and praise be given to your remembrance. The description of what was in her chamber, nothing saves the wager you have laid. Then, if you can, hail. Beg her leave to this jewel. See? It must be married to that your diamond. Ooh. I'll keep them. Joe, once more, let me behold it. Is it that which I left with her? Sir, I thank thee <laughs> uh, that uh, she, <laughs> she stripped it from her arm. Oh, I well. see her yet. Her pretty action did not sell her gift, and yet enriched it to 
and she gave it me and said she prized it. Uh, 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 maybe she plucked it off to send it to me. Ah, she writes so to you, don't she? Oh, no, 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 no. Tis true. Here, take this too. It is a basilisk unto mine eye. Kills me to look on it. Let there be no honor. Where there is beauty, truth, where semblance, love, where there's another man, the vows of women, no more bondage be to where they are made than they are to their virtues, which is nothing. Oh, above measure false. Have patience, sir, and take your ring again. Tis not yet won. It may be probably she lost it. Or who knows if one of her women, uh, but being corrupted, has stolen it uh, from her. Mm? Uh -huh. mm, very true. And so I hope he came by it. Back my ring. Render to me some corporal sign about her. More evident than this. Well, this was stolen. By Jupiter, I had it from her arm. Mark you? He swears by Jupiter. He swears, tis true. Nay, keep the ring. Tis true. I am sure she would not lose it. Her attendants are all sworn and honorable. They induced to steal it. And by a stranger, no, he hath enjoyed her. The cognizance of her inconstancy is this she hath bought the name of whore thus dearly. There, take thy hire, and all the fiends of hell divide themselves between you. Sir, be patient. This is not strong enough to be believed of one persuaded well of. Never talk on it. She hath been courted by him. Well, <laughs> then if you seek for further satisfying under her breast, worthy the pressing lies a mole, right proud of that most delicate lodging. By my life, I kissed it and gave me present hunger to feed oh. again, though full. You do remember the stain upon her? Mm, I, and it doth confirm another stain as big as hell can hold, were there no more but it. Will you hear more? Spare your arithmetic. Never count the turns once in a million. I'll be sworn. No swearing. If you will swear you have not done it, you lie. And I will kill thee. But dost, thou dost deny thou made me cuckold. I'll deny nothing. Oh, that I had her here to tear her limb meal. I will go there and do it in the court before her father, I'll do something. <laughs> oh, quite besides the government of patience, you have won. Let's follow him and pervert the present wrath I, he hath against himself. With all my Scene five, another room oh. in Valario's house. Is there no way for men to be but women? Must be half workers. We are all bastards. And the most venerable man, which I did call my father, was I know not where when I was stamped. Some coiner with his tools made me a counterfeit. Yet my mother seemed the Diane of the time that so doth my wife, the non perial of this. Oh, vengeance, vengeance. Me, of my lawful pleasure, she restrained and prayed me off forbearance, did it 
with a pudency so rosy, the sweet view on it might well have warmed old Saturn, that I thought her as chaste as unsullied snow. Oh, 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 the devils. This yellow Yakimo in an hour was not, or less, the first. Perchance he spoke not, but like a full account of boar, a German one cried, oh, and mounted. Now no opposition, but what he looked for should oppose and she should from encounter God. Could I find out the woman part in me? For there's no motion that tends to vice in man, but I affirm it is the woman's part. Be lying, note it. The woman's flatterings, hers, deceiving hers, lust and rank thoughts, hers, hers, revenge is hers. Ambition, coveting, change of pride, disdain, nice longing, slander, mutability, mutability, all faults that may be named, nay, that hell knows why hers is part or all, but rather all. Or even to vice, there are not constant, but all changing still. One vice, but of a minute old, for one, not half so old as that. I'll write against them, detest them, curse them, yet tis greater skill in a true hate to pray they have their will. The very devils cannot plague them better. Act three. Act three. Should we take a break or should we just motor on? Because uh, Richard's probably getting late for Richard. Maybe we should just zoom ahead. What do you think? Because uh, he's he's got quite a journey to go yet. We do. You think we can make it without a break? Let's let's try on. let's try uh, Act three and see what happens. Okay. <laughs> so let's get on. a barn. Let's put on a show. Come on. Give me a um, give me a second here. My for some reason when I, when I went to the script website, you know, it used to be all everything you know was just in order and you could just scroll the whole play. Now it's like every scene, you have to hit a button to go to the next scene, and it's like go up to the top of that. Go up to the top of that. You should see a link that says entire play. Okay. Or Richard could read that. Act three, scene one. But I, you know, I'm. I'll get there in a second. No, the switching between scenes, uh, Jim. Okay. You gonna have to go back and forth. I know what you're talking about. Well, okay. Let's see. I mean, this is all the plays. I hit Cymbeline. It's Cymbeline. And... Oh, well. I can read see. this if you want. Higher play. Um, Richard's got to go to bed. We got to go and get up. <laughs> oh, here we go. Yeah. Entire play in one page. Oh, thank you. Sir. Now could... I just have to find Act Three. Should be easy. Halfway through. Three. Let's go to the snack bar. Let's all go to the snack bar. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> or you went to the snack. I hope bar. you people are peeing. Pretend you <laughs> ate some food. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, no, okay. No, I no, see no. your cat, Linda. <laughs> Where? Oh, you see my kitty cat? Did that yes. one? Yes. Oh. <laughs> okay, I right. five. That's my little um, cheetah. Come here, cheetah. Cute. Look at how oh, cute she's a tiny one. She's a little baby. Oh. <laughs> okay. okay. All right. <laughs> I got it, guys. Thank you so much for your help. Uh, is it? All right. The Act Three, Scene One. Britain, a hall in Cymbeline's palace. Enter in state Cymbeline, Queen, Cloten, and lords at one door, and at another, Caius Lucius and attendants. Now say, what would Augustus Caesar with us? Is that David? 
I'll stop it. When Julius Caesar, whose remembrance yet lives in men's eyes, will to ears and tongues be theme and hearing ever, was in this Britain and conquered it, Cassia Blalan, thine uncle, famous in Caesar's praises, no whit less than his feet <laughs> deserving it, for him and his succession granted Rome a tribute yearly. 3,000 pounds, which by thee lately is left untendered. And to kill the marble shall be so ever. There be many Caesars, ere each another, <laughs> Julius. Britain is a world by itself, and we will nothing pay for wearing our own noses. That opportunity which then they had to take from us, to resume we have again. Remember, sir, my liege, the kings, your ancestors, together with the natural bravery of your isle, which stands at Neptune's park, ribbed and paled in with rocks unscalable and roaring waters, with sands that will not bear your enemy, enemy's boats but set them up to the top mast, a kind of conquest Caesar made here, but made not here his brag of came and saw and overcame with shame, the first that ever touched him. He was carried from off our coast, twice beaten, and his shipping, poor ignorant baubles, on our terrible seas, like eggshells moved upon their surges cracked as easily against our rocks. For joy were off the famed Casablan, who was once at point, oh, oh giggle of fortune, to master Caesar's sword, made Lug's town with rejoicing fires bright, and Britona strut with courage. Um, there's more, there's no more tribute to be paid. Our kingdom is stronger than it was at that time. And as I said, there is no more such Caesar. Other of them may have crooked noses, but to owe such straight arms, none. Ah, son, let your mothers end. We have yet many among us can gripe as hard as Castlebane. I, I do not say that I'm one, but I have a hand. <laughs> Why tribute? Why should we pay tribute if Caesar can hide the sun from us with a blanket or put the moon in his pocket? We will pay him tribute for light. Else, sir, no more tribute, pray you now. You must know, till the injurious Romans did extort this tribute from us, we were free. Caesar's ambition which swelled so much that it did almost stretch the sides of the world against all color here did put the yoke upon us and to shake off becomes a warlike people whom we reckon ourselves to be we do we, we do swear then to caesar our ancestor was there a multimutious uh, ordained our laws, whose use of the sword of Caesar hath too much mangled, whose repair and franchise shall by the power we hold be our good deed. Though Rome be therefore angry, multimutious, uh, made our laws, which was the year of Britain, which did put his brows uh, within a golden crown and called himself king. I am sorry, Cymbeline, that I am to pronounce Augustus Caesar, Caesar, that hath more kings than his servants than thyself domestic officers, thine enemy. Receive it from me, then, 
war and confusion in Caesar's name, pronounced I against thee, look for fury not to be resisted. Thus defiled, I thank thee for myself. Ah, thou art welcome, Caius. Thy Caesar knighted me. My youth I spent under, under him much, and of him I gathered honor, which he to seek of me again perforce and rehope, re behoves me keep at utterance. I am perfect that the Pannonians and the Dalmatians for their liberties are now in arms, a precedent for which not to read would show the Britons cold, so Caesar shall not find them. Let proof speak. His Majesty bids you welcome. <laughs> Make pass time with us a day or two or longer. If you seek us afterwards in other terms, you shall find us in our salt water girdle. If you beat us out of it, it is yours. If you fall in the adventure, our crows shall fare the better for you, and there's an end. So, sir, I hope your master's pleasure and he mine, and all this remain is welcome. Scene two, another room in the palace, and to Pisanio with a letter. How? Of adultery? Wherefore write you not what monsters her accuser? Leonatus, oh master, what a strange infection is fallen into thy ear. What false Italian, as poisonous tongued as handed, hath prevailed on thy too ready hearing? Disloyal? No. She's punished for her truth, and undergoes more goddess-like than wife-like such assaults as would take in some virtue. Oh, my master, thy mind is, mind to her is now as low as were thy fortunes. How? That I should murder her? <gasps> Upon the love and truth and vows which I have made to thy command, I, her, her blood? If it be so to do good service, never let me be counted serviceable. How I, how look I, that I should seem to lack humanity so much as this fact come to. Do it, the letter, that I have sent her by her own command shall give thee opportunity. Oh, damned paper, black as the ink that's on thee, senseless bauble, thou art fedority, fedori for this act and lookest so virgin-like without. Oh, here she comes. I am ignorant when I am commanded. Go oh, now, Pisanio. Uh, madam, here's a letter from my lord. Who? Thy lord? That is my lord, Leonatus? Oh, I learned indeed words that astronomer that knew the stars as I his characters. He will lay the future open, you good gods. Let, let what is here contain, contain it relish of love, of my Lord's health, of his content. Yet not that we two are asunder, let that grieve him. Some grief are medicinable, that is one of them. For it doth physic love of his content, all but that, Good wax thy leave. Blessed, blessed be you bees that make these locks of counsel. Lovers and men in dangerous bonds pray not alike. Though for fitters you can you cast in prison, 
Yet you clasp young Cupid's tables. Good news, gods. Justice and your father's rod, should he take me in his dominion, could not be so cruel to me as you. Oh, the dearest of, the dearest of creatures will even renew me with your eyes. Take notice that I am in Cambria at Milford Haven. What you own love will out of this, this advice you follow. So he wishes you all happiness that remains loyal to his bow, and you're increasing in love, Leonatus Postumus. Oh, for a horse with wings, heardst thou Pisanio? He is, he is a Milford's heaven, red, and tell me how far this theater. If one of men's affairs might plot, plot it in a week, why may I not glide thither in a day? Then, through Pisanio, who longs like me to see thy lord? Who longest? Let me bait, but not like me, yet longest, but in a fainted kind. Oh, not like me, for mine's beyond, beyond. Say and speak thick. Love's counselor should fill the boards of hearing to the smothering of the sense. How far is it to this same blessed Milford? And by the way, tell me how Wells was made so happy as to inherit such a heaven. But first of all, first of all, how we may steal from hence and for the gap that we should make in time from our hence going and our return to excuse. But first, go get hence. Why should excuse be born of over bigot? or over bigot? We talk of that hereafter. Pretty, speak. How many score of miles that we will ride twixt hour and hour? One score twixt sun and sun, madam. It's enough for you. And too much, too. Why one that rose to execution, man, could never go so slow? I have heard of riding wagers where where horses have been nimbler than the sands that run in the clock's behalf. But this is foolery. Go bid my woman's thing a sickness. Say she will home to her father and provide me presently a riding suit, no costlier than will fit a Franklin housewife. Madam, your best consider. I see before me, man, nor here, nor here nor that ensues, but have a fog in them that I cannot look through. Away, pretty, do as I bid thee. There is no more to say, accessible in none but Milford's way. Scene three, Wales, a mountainous country with a cave. Enter from the cave, Balerius, Guiderius, and Arvaragus. Following. Very good. Oh, nicely done. Uh, a goodly day not to keep house with such whose roof as low as ours. Stoop, boys. This gate instructs you how to adore the heavens and bows you to a morning's holy office. The gates of monarchs are arched so high that giants may jet through and keep their imperious turbans on without good morrow to the sun. Hail, thou fair heaven. We house in rock, yet use thee not so hardly as prouder livers do. Hail, heaven. Hail, heaven. Now for our mountain sport. Up to yonder hill, your legs are young. I'll tread these flats. Consider when you are above the perceive me like a crow, but it is the place which lessens and sets off. And you may then revolve what tales I have told you of courts of princes, of tricks in war. This service is not service being done, but being so allowed to apprehend thus draws us a profit 
from all things we see. And often to our comfort shall we find the sharded beetle in a safer hold than is this full winged eagle. Oh, this life is nobler than attending for a check richer than doing nothing for a bauble, prouder than rustling in unpaid for silk. Such gain, the cap of him makes him fine, yet keeps his book uncrossed, no life to ours. Out of your proof you speak, we poor, unfledged, have never winged from view of the nest nor know not what airs from home. Happily, this life is best if quiet life be dead. Tweeter to you that have a sharper known. We were uh, well corresponding with your stiff age, but unto us it is a cell of ignorance, traveling a bed, a prison to a debtor that not dares to stride a limit. What should we speak of? when we are old as you, when we shall hear the rain and when the big dark December. How, in this our pinching cave, shall we discourse the freezing hours away? We have seen nothing. We are beastly, subtle as the fox for prey, like <laughs> warlike as the wolf for what we eat. Our valor is to chase what flies our cage. We make a choir as doth the prison bird and sing our bondage freely. How you speak? Did you but know the city's urseries and felt them knowingly? The art to the court, as hard to leave as keep, whose top to climb is certain falling, or so slippery that the fear's as bad as falling, the toil of the war, the pain that only seems to seek out danger in the name of fame and honor, which dies in the search, and has oft a slanderous epitaph, as record of fair act. Nay, many times doth ill deserve by doing well. What's worse, must curtsy at the censure. Oh, boys, this story the world may read in me, my body marked with Roman swords. And my report was once first with the best of note. Cymbeline loved me. And when a soldier was thy theme, my name was not far off. Then I was a tree whose boughs did bend with fruit. But in one night, a storm or robbery, call it what you will, shook down my mellow hangings, nay, my leaves, and left me bare to weather. Uncertain favor. My fault being nothing, as I have told you oft, but that two villains whose false oaths prevailed before my perfect honor swore to Cymbeline I was confederate with the Romans, so followed my banishment, and this twenty years, this rock and these dimensions have been my world. Demain. Whatever. There's men. Demains. 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 Like domain. Yes. Demains. This rock and these domains have been my world where I have lived and at honest freedom paid more pious debts to heaven than in all the fore end of my time. But up to the mountains. This is not hunger's hunter's language. He that strikes the venison first shall be the lord of the feast. To him 
the other two shall minister, and we will fear no poison, which attends in place of greater state. I'll meet you in the valleys. Oh, hard it is to hide the sparks of nature. These boys know little they were our sons to the king, nor Cymbeline dreams that they were our alive. They think they are mine, and though trained up thus meanly in the cave wherein they bow, their thoughts do hit the roofs of palaces, and nature prompts them in simple and low things to prince it much beyond the tricks of others. This Polydor, heir of Cymbeline and Britain, whom the king, his father, called Guderius. Jove, when on my three-foot stool I sit and tell the warlike feats I have done, his spirits fly out into my story, say, thus mine enemy fell, and thus I set my foot on its neck. Even then the princely blood flows in his cheek. He sweats, strains his young nerves, and puts himself in posture that acts my words. The younger brother, Godwal, wants Avariargus, as in a like figure, strikes life into my speech and shows much more his own convincing. Hark, the game is roused. Oh, Sibylline, heaven in my conscious knows thou didst unjustly banish me. Whereon, at three and two years old, I stole these babes, thinking to bar thee of succession. As thou reftest me of my lands, you're a file, thou waste their nurse. They took thee for their mother, and every day do honor to her grave. Myself, Valerius, that I am Morgan called, they take for natural father. The game is up. Scene four. Country near Milford Haven, enter Pisanio and Imogen. Thou told me, when we came from horse, the place was near at hand. Never long my mother saw to see me first, as I have now, Pisanio, man. What is posthumous? What is in my mind, in thy mind, that makes thee stir thus? Wherefore breaks thou sight from the inward of thee? One, but painted thus, will be interpreted as thing perplexed beyond self-explanation. Put thyself into a haviour of less fear, our wildness, vanquish my staider senses. What's the matter? Why tenderst thou that paper to me, with a look untender? If it be summer news, smile to it before, if winterly, thou needest but keep thy countenance still. My husband's hand, that drug them Italy had out, crafted him and he's at some hard point. Speak, man, thy tongue might take off some extremity, which to read will be even mortal to me. Please you, read, and you shall find me, wretched man, a thing the most disdained of fortune. Thy mistress, Pisanio, had played the trumpet in my bed, the testimonies whereof lie bleeding in me. I speak not out of weak surmises, but from proof as strong as my grief and as certain as I expect my revenge. That part thou, Pisanio, must act for me. In thy fate be not tainted with the breach of hers. Let thine own hands take away her life. I shall give thee opportunity at Milford Haven. She had my letter for the purpose where, if thou fear to strike and to make me certain it is done, thou art the pander, pander to her dishonor and equally to me disloyal. What? Shall I need draw to draw my sword? 
the paper hath cut her throat already. No, oh, tis slander, whose edge is sharper than sword, whose tongue outvenoms all the worms of Nile, whose breath rides on the poisted wings and doth belie all corners of the world. Kings, queens, states, maids, matrons, nay, the secrets of the grave, this viper, her slander enters. What cheer, madam? Fell to his bed. What is to be false? To lie and watch there and to think of him? To whip this clock and clock if sleep ch charge nature? To break it with a fearful dream of him and cry myself awake? What fell to his bed? He said, Alas, good lady. Hi, false. Thy conscience witness, Latimo. Thou art this accuse him of incontinency. Then thou then looks looks like a villain. Now methink thy favor's good enough. Some Jay of Italy, whose mother was her painting, had betrayed him. Poor I am still, a garment out of fashion, and for I am richer than hanged by the walls, I must be ripped. To pieces with me, oh men's bows are women's traitors. All good seeming, by thy revolt, O oh, husband, should be thought put out for villainy, not born where, where it grows, but worn a date for ladies. Good madam, hear me. <sighs> True honest men being hurt, like false Aeneas, where in his time to fell through false, and Simon weeping did scandal many a holy tear took pity from most true wretchedness. So thou, Posthumus, we lay the, le the leaven on all proper men. Goodly and gallant should be false and perjure from thy grave fall. Come, fellow, be thou honest. Do thou thy master's bidding. When thou sits him, a little witness my obedience. Look, I draw the sword myself. Take it and hid the innocent mansion of my love, my heart. Fear not, this empty of all things but grief. Thy master is not there, who was indeed the richest of it. Do this his bidding. Strike thou mayst be valiant in a better cause. But now thou seems a coward. Hence, vile instrument, thou shalt not damn my hand. Why, I must die, and if I do not by hand, thou art not servant of thy masters. Against self-slaughter there is a prohibition, prohib prohibition so divine that cravens my weak hand. Come, here is my heart, Something, something's afforded, soft, soft, well no defense, obedience at this cupboard. What is here? scriptures of the loyal the loyal leonatus and turns to heresy away away corruptors of my fate you shall no more be stomachers of my heart thus may poor fools believe false teachers to those that are betrayed do feel the treason sharply yet the traitor stands in worst case of woe and thou posthumus thou that didst set up my disobedience against the king, my father, and make me put into contempt the suit of prince fellows, shall hereafter find it is not act of common passage, but a strain of rareness. And I grieve myself to think, when thou shalt be dis disseged by her that now thou tirest on, how thy memory will then be panged by me. Pretty, dispatch, the lamb entreats the butcher, where is a knife? Thou art so slow to thy master's bidding, when I desire to. Oh, gracious lady, since I received command to do this business, I have not slept one wink. Do it, and to, and to bed then. I'll wake mine eyeballs blind first. Wherefore then, this undertake it? Why hast thou abused so many miles with a pretense? This place, mine action and thine own, our horses labor 
the time inviting thee, the perturbed court from my being absent, whereunto I never purpose return. Why hast thou gone so far to be unbent when thou hast taken thy stand? The elected dear before thee? But to win time, to lose so bad employment, in which I have considered of a course. Good lady, hear me with patience. Talk with thy tongue weary, speak. I have heard I'm a strumpet, and mine ear that in fall struck can take no great greater wound, no tent to bottom that. But speak. Then, madam, I thought you would not back again. Most like, bring me, bringing me here to kill me. Not so, neither. But if I were as wise as honest, then my purpose would prove well. It cannot be but that my master is abused. Some villain, I am singular in his art, hath done you both this cursed injury. Some Roman courtesan? No, on my life. I'll give you, but notice you are dead and send him some bloody sign of it, for it is commanded I should do so. You shall be missed at court, and that will be well confirmed. Why, good fellow, what shall I do? What shall I do thee where? Where bide? How live? Or in my life, what comfort when I am dead to my husband? If you'll back to the court. No court, no father, nor no more ado with the harsh noble simple nothing that clotten whose love suit had been to me as fearful as a siege if not at court then not in britain must you bide where then had britain all the sun that shines day night are they not bad in britain in the world's volume our britain seems as of it but not in it in a great pool of swan's nets pretty think there lives out of Britain. I am most glad you think of another place. The ambassador, Lucius the Roman, comes to Milford Haven tomorrow. Now, if you could wear a mind dark as your fortune is, and but disguise that which to appear itself must not yet be but by self-danger, you should tread a course pretty and full of view, yea, happily near the residence of Posthumus, so not, at least that, though his actions were not visible, yet report should render him hourly to your ear as truly as he moves. Oh, for such a means, to peril to my modesty, not dead on it, I will adventure. Well then, here's the point. Must forget to be a woman. Change command into obedience, fear, and niceness. The handmaids of all women, or more truly, women is pretty self, into a waggish courage, ready in jibes, quick answer, saucy, and querulous as the weasel. Nay, you must forget that rarest treasure of your. Tell him we're in your happy. 
which will make him know if that his head have ear in music, doubtless with joy he will embrace you, for he is honorable and doubling that most holy. Your means abroad, you have me rich, and I will never fail beginning your supplement. Thou art all the comfort the gods will diet me with. Pretty, away. There is more to be considered, but will even all that good time will give us. This attempt, I am a soldier too, and will abide it with a prince courage. Away, pretty. Well, madam, we must take a short farewell, lest being missed. I suspected of your carriage from the court. My noble mistress, here is a box. I had it from the queen. What's in it is precious. If you are sick at sea or stomach qualm that land, a dram of this will drive away distemper to some shade and fit you to your manhood. May the gods direct you to the best. Amen. I thank thee. Um, can I, I cue my understudy. <laughs> oh, oh, call in the understudy. Understudy to the stage. We ran out of O's. <laughs> Aloha. Can I, can I, Richard? So nice to see all of you. No, Thanks for joining us. No yes. Thank you. You cannot oh, be long. replaced. Farewell. I tell you, Farewell. <laughs> not to be replaced. Do, do, 